you through the approach that I used um, to study the great American conversation and the enduring issue of... <coughs> Fred, who's going to hand it up? Um, natural rights and equal rights. Okay? That's something very common. Um, other kind of enduring issues, majority versus minority rights, mm -hmm. all the First Amendment rights, free speech, would be an enduring issue. The right to vote. The right, the right to, to vote, vote, which you see is put into here. These enduring issues. These guiding American principles. I went with natural rights because every time I went on a social studies example text, there was something about natural rights. And it's in the Declaration of Independence, and that's something that comes up. Okay, so I want to walk you through this approach. Um, the enduring issue, again, is natural and equal rights. Um, that is my bit of the great American conversation. This is on the, that this is on the front of your handout. Um, the emphasis throughout is on what American writers and speakers mean when they refer to the founding documents and say things like this. Our constitutional and God-given rights. Great wells of democracy dug deep by the founding fathers. The majestic words of Thomas Jefferson, the sacred heritage of our nation. Now, if every time they see words like that, they have to look up sacred, and you have to explain that it comes from religion, and what heritage means, and all that. That's where I don't want them to go. I want them to know when they hear <coughs> words like this, the majestic words of Thomas Jefferson, they'll go, oh, equal rights. So the more I keep, you keep showing them this, and that's what they're supposed to think, they can get into these much more complex texts where they wouldn't really understand every word, but it's these things that Americans talk about, and they know um, when, they, when they read something like that. So, again, I emphasize with them, you're not going to understand every word that these writers and speakers use. In fact, I don't know the meaning of every word that I'm going to pick up in certainly a Supreme Court case or even an article in the New York Times. But they need to understand what people are saying when they refer to this enduring issue of equal rights and natural rights. Um, and they'll learn, as you see, that Thomas Jefferson, the words of Thomas Jefferson is one of the subtopics um, on the GED. So they're really talking about the Declaration of Independence. And what is that all about in the beginning? That you have these rights you're born with, and they're equal with everyone else's. And they don't have to be able to understand every single word in the preamble to the Declaration to understand that. So in this unit, they get familiarity with the Declaration, the Constitution, the Bill of Rights, the Civil Rights Amendments, and this vocabulary they're absolutely going to see on the test. Colonists, natural rights, suffrage, enfranchisement. All those voting words are really big words, but if they learn that to have the franchise, enfranchisement, suffrage, it's just all about voting. Um, great thing to learn for the test. Um, focusing on one topic like this, because I know it might be scary not to cover all the topics in social studies, like how are we then going to do economics and how are we going to do global trade. Focusing on one topic like this allows them to learn the content vocabulary, like some of those words I just mentioned, so that they can focus on learning the other academic vocabulary that comes up in the text and is so important. So they can quickly know, oh, I know what they're talking about there, the majestic words of Thomas Jefferson. They can focus on other words that might be new to that reading. Um, one little bit of research, one study has shown that students who use that same academic vocabulary over and over and over again are four times more likely to retain that learning than if they get um, a new topic every day. So what does that look like in our classrooms? When you decide you're going to teach the main idea in reading, a typical way of doing that in the past or 
even currently, has been to give them lots of different articles that they read to find the main idea. But each of those articles are on a different topic. So while they're finding the main idea, they also have to figure out the new vocabulary and there's another topic. But if everything you give them for the whatever time you want to prescribe, whatever your units are, is something about the founding documents or something about natural rights, they can find the main idea in those things, pick up a little more knowledge, see that same vocabulary again. So that's what I was emphasizing with your news. Mm -hmm. You know, pick something that has to do with the enduring issue that you're talking about, like equal rights. Um, oh, okay. Yes, sorry. I, all of these reading um, experts that we have down here, uh, do you require the students to read the extended documents, or do you pick certain parts? Uh, parts, and you're going to see that. I know, maybe I okay. should have. <laughs> I know this is hard. I'm talking so much. But soon, I keep looking over there, because on those boards over there, which I'm going to put up really okay. fast, okay. each of these units I've kind of pinned up on the board to show what they read, what okay. graphic organizers okay. I All used, right. things like that. Right. Um, and of course, it's only one idea, and there will be more. Right. OK, mm -hmm. so um, you have your outline. Um, you'll see. And this outline, um, if you turn, oh, I think the next slide is, yeah. So these are just, you'll have them with you, I'll go through it. These are the topics right from the, um, content topics from the GED testing service. These are the things I, was, I kind of brought in. Again, it was not a whole study of any one of these, but I kind of brought them in over the semester. Where do the social study practices fit into your curriculum design? The skills, yes. Um, for everything we read, we practice a skill with it. So we would practice um, the central idea and the supporting details. We practice arguments and evidence, but with these readings. Mm -hmm. So all of the practices are incorporated into each? Right, not all. Okay. But okay. yeah, kind of matching. And you'll see that in, okay. the, in the activity. Because um, you're right, every question has a content topic that I've been talking more about and a skill. Um, okay, so you'll see that the course is interdisciplinary. Um, and we really want to incorporate these reading and writing skills and write based on evidence as often as possible. So that's the goal.